How's everybody today? Good. Well, you know, after uh, reviewing the film of the game, you know, it was a really good win for our team. And I think the things that uh, were encouraging was the intangible things that we did in the game. Uh, play with a lot of effort. Uh, play with a lot of toughness. Very physical in the game. And I think our players really competed well in the game. I mean, when things went wrong, um, they, they hung in there and uh, played the next play and kept competing in the game and never really got flustered or lost their poise. Um, you know, examples of that would be, you know, like not playing great on defense but getting hu two huge stops, you know, inside the 10-yard line. Uh, offense controlling the ball like they did. Never really had any ball security issues in all the plays we played. The ball wasn't on the ground. Uh, when we did turn it over, um, the defense that didn't play so well, uh, when we were ahead by seven points and turned it over in not great field position, you know, go three and out. Um, we have a kickoff return for a touchdown in the game, which is obviously not a good thing. Uh, but then get the ball back with, you know, just a minute 30 or whatever and take it down and able to convert, you know, a field goal in two minutes before the half. So, you know, all these things are, you know, very encouraging signs from a competitive standpoint. But, you know, it's also very obvious, like a lot of first games that I saw from a lot of teams, uh, that you need to get better execution on a m more consistent basis, whether, you know, we missed a hot, we missed a block, um, made the wrong line call and got a negative play, um, made too many mental errors on defense, whether it's hurry up or didn't hurry up or we had new linebackers playing. It, that, none of that matters. I mean, really, we got to have better preparation, better attention to detail, uh, and more guys on our team able to play winning football on a consistent basis. And uh, obviously, you know, first game experience for some guys that haven't played a lot uh, is, is, is certainly, you know, monumental in, in terms of them understanding and developing. Uh, so everybody's got to sort of make a commitment, coaches, players, that we got to do a little better job of getting ready to play a game, not just emotionally, all right, which that part of it was fine, but in terms of uh, being smarter than the other team, playing smarter, not making as many mistakes, not giving them opportunities to make plays because of our errors. Uh, and these things are all correctable and fixable, and that's certainly something that, you know, we want to focus on, you know, uh, this week. Um, you know, we had some players of the week, you know, Amari Cooper, uh, TJ Yeldon, Justin Fowler, and you might say, well, Justin Fowler, you know, he didn't carry the ball. He did a great job of blocking. Uh, did a really good job on special teams, too. Uh, defensively, John Jonathan Allen, Landon Collins, and Cyrus Jones uh, all played really well on special teams. Uh, Adam Griffith and J.K. Scott. You know, the two specialists were, you know, the guys that did a really, really good job. Uh, other than that, we didn't have a whole bunch of production on special teams, and I had one really negative play. But we're really looking forward to, you know, our home opener, you know, this weekend. And I know it's an early start on SEC Network. And um, we had great fan support and uh, was really encouraged by the enthusiasm that our fans showed in Atlanta and very hopeful that we'll have a great crowd for the home opener to support, you know, this team so that we can contribute to their improvement by the atmosphere that, that we create. Uh, Florida Atlantic, um, you know, had a pretty good year last year um, and uh, really got off to a pretty good start against Nebraska, believe it or not. The quarterback got hurt about the 26th play of the game, uh, and then they weren't nearly as good, you know, after that because he is probably, you know, the center of what they do and is a very, very effective player. Last year he was a leading passer, leading rusher, uh, leading in a lot of categories, and last year they were a very, very good defensive team. Um, so, you know, these guys are well coached, and we certainly have a lot of respect for them. 
uh, but the focus is on you know what we need to do to make our team better and that's what we're going to really try to focus on uh, this week and uh, I think it's really important how much you improve from first game to second game and I think the key to being successful in this season for a lot of teams you know that I saw is going to be who can improve who can make that improvement all right and that's what we're really you know focused on um, I have two coach first um, could you update us on DeAndre White and his children? Uh, there's two, two injuries really in the game that are significant and I meant to mention it you know DeAndre White probably has a shoulder injury that probably two weeks and then see how it goes from there um, Jerick Williams um, had a Jones fracture in his foot um, which I didn't know anything about after the game and uh, said his foot was hurt and they did an x-ray actually finished the game and uh, they put a screw in it yesterday so he'll be four weeks uh, for sure and then we'll kind of see where he goes from there and the the follow-up was um, or the the other question Cyrus making players of the week you know some people say oh West Virginia completed this pass that pass just could you expound a little on how Cyrus played and why the coaching staff chose uh, I, I could not hear what you're saying is that thing on what about him? Well, you know the guy. I think we, you know, played really, really well. He made two big plays, you know, inside the ten yard line. Uh, he was the one guy that consistently did what he was supposed to do in the secondary, um, and uh, did a good job of covering and didn't didn't give up many plays. And uh, we actually, you know, when they kept throwing the ball to number eleven flip-flopped them to number 11 in the game and you know on the down, down on the last time we stopped him you know he was the guy that was covering the guy on the fade route so um, and got the ball down so he's had a really good camp uh, he's really matured as a player much more confident uh, this year than a year ago um, and has played really well I think he has a good understanding and um, smart guy has poised to adjust, so we're we, we we thought he really did a good job. We do this a lot on production points, um, combination of a guy's grade, which is consistency in terms of doing what he's supposed to do, but also production points, which is plays, tackles, knockdowns, passes defended, um, sacks, tackles for loss. Cause fumbles, recovered fumbles, those kind of things. John, uh, I had two questions also. If you could, just after evaluating film, could you talk about Blake Sims' performance and what you saw for a first time starter? Yeah, well, you know, Blake did a good job in the game. Um, you know, he had a, a, a couple open guys that he missed, uh, and we had a couple good throws that he made that were dropped. Um, those are the kind of things that we're talking about cleaning up on both sides, you know, of the fence. Um, I, I think, you know, the only negative was, especially in the second quarter, which I mentioned, um, you know, after the game, he, you know, poised and calling the plays in the huddle, you know, taking too long in the huddle. We had to call timeout a couple times. You know, those types of things are the game management issues that, you know, we have to improve upon. Uh, we actually went no huddle for a little bit, which then he got settled down, and then he was fine after that. So, um, but I thought it was good. Um, I still don't hesitate to say that there's a quarterback competition and that in some way we'll, we'll probably try to play both quarterbacks you know, in this game. Uh, I don't know how. Uh, when I figure it out, I'm probably not going to tell you, so don't ask. So, and I don't know that it's that important, to be honest with you. And, and switching sides of the ball, you, you did get some pass rush. I don't, yeah. and could you talk about kind of how the secondary and the pass rush played and how much room for improvement there is in those areas? 
Well, we didn't play very well in the secondary at all. Um, we didn't play very well at linebacker. Uh, we had too many miscommunications, too many miscoverages, too many missed assignments. Um, uh, I think that in a lot of cases, you know, the ball came out so fast that whether it was a screen or a, you know, a bubble pass or a smoke or a quick pass, um, and they throw so many screens, you know, the defensive linemen have to do a really good job of retracing on the screen. You know, there was an example in the game where, you know, Jaron Reed did it even though he missed the tackle, missed the play up, it was a three yard gain. Another time nobody did it and the thing was like a 17 yard gain. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's more factors than just how many sacks you got or how much you pressured the quarterback. Um, I, I don't think we did a very good job of executing pressures in the game. Um, but the four guys that played up front, um, I don't think we always uh, played the blockers like we need to, uh, and I think that we have a lot to improve on defensively all the way around. So, you know, I'm, I'm not disappointed. Um, in it is what it is. This is where we are. This is the starting point. Uh, I've seen all these players do things better than they did, so we know they're capable, and we, we, we need to now be able to take it out there to the field and play with poise and be able to adjust and, you know, respond. You know, the two guys that probably, you know, Reggie and Ruben playing linebacker for the first time, fast-paced game, uh, really went fast early in the game. Um, you know, even though we tried to make it simple, they did a few different formations and things that, you know, sort of got their composure a little bit ruffled. Um, and, and I think that affected, you know, everybody around them. Uh, but I also think those guys settled down and played a little bit better in the second half, you know, which is, you know, encouraging. This is the, probably the toughest situation for new players that have no experience uh, as a signal caller trying to go out there and make those kind of adjustments in the game. So uh, they're all going to benefit tremendously from that experience, uh, which I think is probably the most important thing. Just wondering what you saw from Cam Robinson in his first game and then also at right guard rotating Leon and uh, Alphonse Taylor there. Well, you know, Cam did a really good job, you know, considering the fact that he's a freshman. It's the first game he's ever played, you know, in college. And, um, you know, there, there were some things that he could do better. Uh, and there were also some a couple mental errors that, um, you know, that he made. But uh, we were really, really encouraged with, you know, how he played, where he is, and hopefully he'll build on and improve um, in that regard. And I think, you know, both the guys at right guard played okay. Um, and I think we think both guys can improve and play better. Uh, two questions. You mentioned a couple of the explosive plays that West Virginia made. Is that, is that more mental, not getting the right call, not making the right adjustment, or physical, just getting beat and missing tackles? Well, I think it's a combination of all the above. I mean, um, you know, there were times when um, several plays that we were in position and the guy didn't play the ball. Um, it's not what he's coached to do. He's coached to play the ball. He's capable of playing the ball. He didn't play the ball. Um, so that's poise and confidence. I mean, you get in phase on a guy, you're supposed to look for the ball and play the ball. Um, there were other times where you know, they put a whole bunch of formation into the boundary, all right, which you can say, what does that mean? Well, it basically means that the guys that practiced all that stuff when the formation was to the field didn't necessarily get to practice it. So we didn't always react to the plays, you know, like we should have. Um, and I think a couple other times we had mental errors in coverage, like who was covering who. Where's the stunt coming from? So it's kind of a combination of all the things that you said. It's not one particular thing. And I think most of it was created not by lack of knowledge or inability, but by confusion. All right. Once early in the game, the two linebackers got a little bit confused. I think that 
they called things one way, the game plan may have called for it to go the other way, the secondary out there trying to play it the way it's supposed to be, and then it ends up backwards. Because if you do something on defense, if everybody does it wrong, it's right. Really. I mean, you can make the wrong call, but if everybody plays the wrong call, it turns out right. Everybody gets covered. All the gaps get covered. But when you really have a huge issue is when the guys up front are doing it one way and the guys in the back are doing it the other, somebody doesn't get covered. All right? And that, that happened a couple times. All right? And um, so, but, you know, Am I happy about it? Are we happy about it? No. All right. But, you know, I kind of anticipated some of this, you know, based on how they play, what they would do, knowing that they would do things that were different. And, you know, so my focus was is, you know, how can we get everybody settled down? And it really wasn't until halftime, uh, until we, you know, had sort of the calm in the midst of chaos. You know, I mean, that's really what we were, we needed. All right, so, but, uh, and you know, we have some guys that play out there, they're not used to that. All right, they're, they're, they're not used to things not happening right. So that affects them a little bit too. And secondly, with Jarek being out, is Gino fully available to, to step in there, or who are some other guys that could play that position? Uh, Gino has always played it. He played it in the game. Um, and uh, you know, Marie Smith plays it. Um, you know, Eddie Jackson will. We're, we're going to probably start investing some reps in Eddie Jackson. You know. This week, I don't know if he'll, we'll see whether we think he can play or not. He thinks he can play. He thinks he's ready to play. He thinks he's ready to go. Doc's cleared him to go. So, you know, we just haven't invested the reps in him with the ones and twos because if you do that and a guy can't play, then that's somebody else you could have repped that didn't get the reps. Now he's going to have to play in a game. So we're, we're going to start investing some reps in him, and then we'll decide later in the week whether we think he's – Okay to go or not? Front here, Ken. When it was going real fast in the first half, how important was it that your offense was able to go on a 14-play drive and then a 13-play drive later on? And you mentioned a couple offensive line guys, but talk about that unit as a whole. Well, but but I think that um, you know one of the plans going into a game like this is. Um, that they, they want to go fast, um, but if we have the ball, they can't really do that. All right, so it was to try to control the ball in the game and keep it away from them, which all right, we did very, very well. All right, we did very well in the game. Now, we can't get, you know, we had three penalties in the second half on first down that all put you behind the eight ball when you want to play like that. All right, so you end up with first and 20 twice and first and 15 another time. So, uh, you know, that part of it wasn't great. But uh, I do think our offensive line controlled the line of scrimmage. Our running backs ran the ball well. Uh, we executed, you know, very well on most of our plays from an efficiency standpoint. And when we didn't, um, we, we usually didn't quite block them right you know, from a point out standpoint. So it was really important in a game. Coach, just how you used Henry and Yeldon in that mix in the game and how'd you feel like it played out, both rushed for 100 yards, but how'd you like the flow of each guy? Well, I, I, that's how we sort of went in the game, planning to play the game and uh, probably use Kenyon Drake, you know, a little bit more in special situations and um, just didn't, maybe come up where he would play we thought he would play a little bit more in the game uh didn't quite come up quite as much uh those situations but um you know we have a lot of confidence in all three of those guys and i like the way both guys played and um that that's probably you know as long as we can keep them healthy and they can stay healthy that's probably how we'll we'll play 
coming off the big game, uh, non-conference game in a neutral site, what's the, the message to the team this week about staying focused with uh, two non-conference games coming up? Well, it really doesn't matter about that. You know, I've already talked about that, really. You know, the, the focus is on our team getting better. All right, so if we're focused on getting better, and that's really the point of emphasis, I mean, not that we don't respect our opponent, but it doesn't really have anything to do with who you're playing. It has everything to do with who you are, all right, and how you respond to the challenge of uh, going out and doing the things that we need to do to improve and play better. And we're not where we need to be. Uh, we're not the team that we can be. Uh, so if you're challenged by that, then why, why is it so important? Why, why is the external factor of who you're playing have anything to do with how you play? So that means if we're playing against uh, Michael Jordan, we play our best game. But if we're playing against just another old basketball player, then we play just like another old basketball player. Is that your thinking on this? Because it's not mine. All right, so, and if it's our players thinking, I can tell you right now, I'm going to be pretty pissed about it. So, last one real quick. I know it's not something you've done a lot here, having the offensive coordinator on the sideline. I wonder just how it went going that first time with having Lane down there in terms of communication. And I think it went really well. And I, I think if he wasn't on the sidelines, we, we would have had um, a lot more issues, maybe more issues than we could overcome, you know, to. Uh, be successful in the game. Uh, he did a really good job of managing, you know, Blake and helped him manage the game um, as, as much as you could ever do it. And uh, I, I don't think anybody could have done that had he been in the press box. So I think that was critical to um, – but, th you know, that got decided two weeks ago. All right, that guy decided this is how we're going to play this game. This is what we got to do. This is the sidelines. This is the game administration. So it was practiced. All right, it wasn't just like, okay, let's go do it this way. All right, and um, so, and, and, you know, Lane did a really good job. The whole offensive staff did a good job of getting the information. Uh, but I think from a game management standpoint, it, it, it really went well. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you.